Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I want to talk about what is the purpose of research and development and then what are some examples of research and development activities. So I actually am a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship. And research and development is a really important part of the stuff that we actually might talk about and think about. Um, and it, when when it comes to, to companies, it's a central part of how companies actually um, generate revenue and how they actually get better over time. So what is the purpose of research and development? Well, uh, research and development is really just thinking about how you can actually generate more ideas or more products and services that serve the user's needs or your customer's needs in a, in a better and and uh, more fulfilling way, right? So um, there's, there's kind of two different components to research and development. If you think about the particular name it's called, right? And there's, it's on purpose. So R&D is called research and development because there's one part, which is research, which is the generation of ideas that are um, out there, so you're extending the knowledge of the particular company or the firm that that the knowledge that the firm possesses. So you're exploring a fair bit, and then there's also development where you're thinking about how you can turn this knowledge that you've generated into something that is usable, and um, that's going to help out the users or the user experience that they have, right? So you're going to actually produce some products and services based on that knowledge that you got. In, in or developed from the research side of things. So what are some uh, examples of research and development activities? Well, what you should be thinking about with research and development activities is in, in your mind, and I think this is the easiest way to think about research and development, is you want to think about the activities in terms of a process, right? So you need to think of it from where you have raw ideas and you're you're thinking about particular raw ideas and then you're moving towards the end where you actually have a usable product now sometimes that might be called the innovation funnel and and uh i think it was cooper at uh, mcmaster university was first started thinking about this i think it was robert cooper first started talking about this and it's really just this idea uh, you start with one side, you have a bunch of ideas, and you narrow it down into a usable product, and you go through different sort of stages along the way to get to that particular moment uh, where you actually have a product. Now, what I would suggest um, to think about in, in terms of the process of research and development is you want to think about or some of the, the activities, what you'd want to think about is, first of all, having processes in play where you can generate ideas and then cultivate these ideas. So this is where things like organizational culture, um, you know, collection of ideas and, you know, having the right having the right sort of organization to generate sort of meaningful ideas really makes a really important um addition to your organization then you want to think about okay so you have these wonderful ideas for products and services well then you have to think about well how does it actually fit with the users in mind right so then you have to combine that with what the users are thinking about and thinking about user requirements then you will go through and do the design and development of uh, the product and service and there's a whole bunch of different stages with the design and development of the um, the product so for example you might think about the um, user experience and then you might think about the the maybe it's the uh, I don't know like just all the different parts of going from when you first have the particular idea and then you turn it into an actual physical thing right so you might think about user requirements then you might think about how they're actually going to flow through the product that you're having and sort of work through the product that you, you're producing or service you're producing. And then you might think about, OK, in terms of the operation side, can we produce this much more cheaply and inefficiently by removing some things that the users would like? But, you know, it's not necessarily what we want to have at this moment. You want to sort of think about the the different parts where you can optimize the, the process, the product and process that you have. 
Um, and then you will also think about, so the fourth thing you want to think about is um, the, the quality assurance of the particular product that you have, right? So you want to think about the testing and making sure that the product and service actually works the way that it, it is intended to work, that, um, you know, that you're thinking it's going to work. So there's going to be a little bit of testing involved in quality assurance. And then finally, at the end, and this is kind of a repeated process, right? It doesn't stop. It's not one thing that just is like, okay, this is done, and then you don't have to do anything else at the end. It really is this repeated process. You go talk to the users, see if it, if the users like what you've done, and then you know they'll have suggestions, and then you just kind of keep reiterating and going through, iterating and going through until the product gets better over time. And that's really how the uh, research and development process works. It's pretty, um, it, 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 it's, you know, this is, how we know things actually work with a um, research and development process and it's really so i want to recap with thinking about the different activities that research and that you do in research and in development is you are going to think about it in terms of a process so from generation of ideas to an actual usable product and then you're going to redo that over and over and over again until the product actually gets really um, effective and you're continuously improving over time so that's all I wanted to talk about um, with this. And if you like this video, if you thought that this was useful, make sure you do give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. It does help to get the word out. And particularly with the Reciprocity Project where it is something that I am doing. It's a, it's a sharing economy proofreading platform that I'm trying to get out there because I think it's a really useful tool that lots of people should be able to use um, and find it really, really helpful. And as well as I want to help out graduate students that are going through and thinking about doing research in this area um, in, in, uh, in graduate school. So if it ever becomes profitable uh, component, what I want to do is actually start giving some of the profits away um, to help out with scholarships and stuff like that for people that are studying research and development and strategy and things like that. So, all right. Well, that's it. Take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.